Hello students, I am Dr. Ovia from the Department of Biotechnology and I am here to teach you a basic topic that is of vast importance in case of biotechnology that is genetic engineering. In the previous videos, I have talked about what are the cloning vectors used and what is the overview of what are the tools used in genetic engineering. In this video, we can look into the cloning strategies, the strategy that is used to express a recombinant DNA target. So once we have got the vector, we have in the previous video I talked about all these vectors. So using these vectors, how to clone the target gene and to how to express this in a host, especially in a bacterial host, we can see that in bacteria we can obtain a particular target colony. So we need a basic method that is screening. A screening is very essential so that we can get the right target, that is the right clone can be isolated from our method. So screening is the major method used, blue and white screening is used where we can see the target vector contains a lag Z and an ampicillin resistance and a lag Z vector. So where the target gene is inserted into the lag Z gene, the lag Z gene can get transformed by the plasmids and when there is X gal, that is when the X gal is added as a substrate and this uh, beta -galax galactosidase which cleaves the X gal can finally provide a blue colony. When we obtain a blue colony, we will be very sure that our target gene is, has been inserted into the target and the blue colony refers to recombinant expression of our target gene and hence we can get the blue colony isolated from the remaining other white colonies. So using this method, it is a commonly used method to isolate the target colony that is the clone can be obtained. Other methods include insertional activation where you have a target gene that is being inserted in the vector, the plasmid and the vector can be an resistant to a particular antibiotic. It can be ampicillin or a rifampicin resistant, it can be any antibiotic that can be used. Here in case a commonly used method is ampicillin resistance whereas in case of mammalian cells, hygromycin resistance is the majorly used method. Here we can see amp resistant gene being inserted in the vector and once the vector is being cloned, the target gene, gene is inserted and when it is expressed, we can see the colony where the only the ampicillin resistant colony can be obtained, where the media contains the particular antibiotic being added so that only those that can survive in that particular antibiotic can be able to produce the colony. So other method includes reporter gene assay, where the reporter gene that is the target gene can be obtained as a fluorescent product. So once you get the reporter gene being cloned and the substrate is being added, you can get an output. The output will be in fluorescence. So the fluorescence can be obtained using a luciferin and luciferin adenylate undergoes oxid oxidative decarboxylation and hence a stimulation of light. Based on the stimulation, you, you get a re uh, fluorescent product. So this is one particular assay which is commonly used where you can get a signal and the signal shows that there is expression of the gene. Other method includes colony hybridization technique where basically hybridization refers to binding of a complementary DNA sequence. That is you have a template and it can bind to the complementary gene sequence and this can be used for manipulating or getting a target gene being identified. So here the colony hybridization technique can be used where the colony that is the cloned cells, the cloned cell will be uh, transferred to a membrane, get lysed and once the contents are released out, the DNA and RNA comes out and this can be probed to any antibody. It can be an antibody or a complementary DNA sequence and once you get it bound, you can do the visualization. The probe can be used and the membrane is visualized by UV or autoradiography. The other technique it so includes immunological technique where it is a simple method, you lyse the cells. Once the cells are lysed, you get the DNA RNA out. And once it is done, you can do an antigen antibody interaction. The recombinant protein will be present and the antigen antibody complex can be obtained. Once the complex is formed, it can be visibly obtained by X-ray. Other techniques in hybridization includes three, three blotting techniques where it is a very simple technique where you have three types that is southern blotting, northern blotting and western blotting. In case of southern blotting, it is used to detect DNA to identify a specific DNA sequence using a probe whereas in case of northern blotting you have to detect the RNA that is the mRNA being uh, transcribed the RNA using a specific RNA probe when in case of western blotting it is used to detect protein and a specific protein can be detected using antibody that is a specific antibody is being used where the target protein is 
present or not can be identified using antigen antibody interaction. So, in case of southern blotting which is a DNA hybridization technique, here you can see the target genomic DNA is being restriction digested, the digested fragments are being electrophoresed. Once it is electrophoresed, the gel can be transferred into a nitrocellulose membrane and the membrane is now probed with radioactivity, radioactive probe is being incubated, the excess probe is being washed off and the probe hybridized to the restriction fragment. Only those fragments that are bound to the target can be uh, visibly obtained when it is exposed to an X-ray film. So, using this method we can see whether the target, our target gene of interest is present or not. The other method includes northern blot. In case of northern blot, you can see gene expression whether it is present using detecting the RNA of the sample. First, we have to isolate the RNA. Once the RNA is isolated, we can run the electrophoresis, let it get migrated. Once the migration is done, it is transferred into the membrane. A membrane can be a nylon membrane and then the nylon membrane is being probed. It is being incubated with radioactive labeled probes and the when if the probe gets hybridized to the target DNA, the radioactivity is uh, released and hence based on auto radiography image, we can see whether our target gene of interest is present or not. The other method includes western blotting. In case of western blot, it is a very nice technique where you have to detect the specific protein of interest. So, the, pro the target recombinant protein expression will be identified using western blot and this is a very gold standard method in case of a recombinant DNA technology since ultimately we have to look into the expression of a recombinant protein. So, in case of western blot, the specific recombinant protein that is being cloned, the expressed protein can be identified. Here you have the protein sequence, uh, we know the protein, the target protein is identified. So, we know that and then only we look into the antibody. So, we get the antibody specific for it and then we perform SDS page analysis, lyse the cells, get the protein out, the protein content is run by SDS page and then it gets migrated by electrophoresis based on the molecular weight and once the SDS page is done, the protein gets separated by a molecular weight and then it is being transferred into a nylon or a PVDF membrane. And once the transfer is done, it is, it is incubated using a specific antibody so, and hence this method is called immunowestern blotting where specific antibodies are incubated within the membrane and then it gets uh, the non-specificity is washed off and then you look you can either get a colorimetric detection or a fluorescent chemiluminescent based detection also. So, how do we get all these templates? How the library is created? Once we know the target gene of interest, then only we can perform any recombinant DNA technology. In this case, you have both genomic and cDNA library, where genomic DNA library is collection of clones in a number to contain all of the DNA present in an organism. So, an E. coli genomic library is, is helpful where we can get the entire whole genome sequence of a particular organism. So, libraries are prepared by purifying the total cell DNA, the total genomic DNA is isolated and this will be partially in inserted into a vector. The vector can be a lambda vector, back vector or yak vector. Once the total human genome content is being restriction digested, millions of copies of these fragments are being obtained. Once we obtain the fragments, the fragments are get introduced into the plasmid. So, we get a various other plasmid clones. So, this clone will be a genomic library and this clone can be expressed to look into what are those sequences. In case of cDNA, it does not contain the introns. It is only the exon sequence where the sequence that codes for a protein is being identified. So, each cell has a different collection of transcript and in this case you can get the transcripts being identified. So, you get the target cDNA where or a total DNA. Total DNA will be isolated or total RNA should be isolated. In case of genomic li library, it is total D genomic DNA. Whereas in case of cDNA, cDNA, it is total RNA isolation. Once you get the total RNA, it is converted to cDNA and then the cDNA is being restriction digested. And post this, this can be incubated with transcriptase, the strand is obtained, the cDNA is obtained. So, you first collect and isolate mRNA, perform reverse transcriptase and get the cDNA out of it. Now, the cDNA is inserted into the plasmid. This insert plasmid is grown and it is propagated to isolate the uh, protein sequence. Once you get the colony, once you get the more propagation, this propagated cells now can be used to isolate the DNA and you can sequence the entire genome. 
You're using this method, you can sequence only the exons that is the protein coding sequence of a eukaryotic genome. Once you have done all these, once you have got the protein, our aim is to get higher amounts of recombinant proteins where the expression system plays a major role. There is many expression system, the host is very important. In this case, we have four, many other hosts where we can clone the target and insert it into the host. Host can be a bacteria, host can be an yeast or insect or even a mammalian cell. In case of large, large scale isolation of a recombinant protein, our aim is to obtain example insulin. To isolate an insulin protein for treatment of diabetes, you need large scale method. So in this case, we can use bacterial method where it is easier to propagate or easier to multiply a bacteria. Whereas to get a post translationally modified protein, a specific growth factor or a specific enzyme that is used in basic research, our aim is to use only mammalian cell cultures. Here we can see a bacterial expression system. Here there is a vector where the gene is inserted, the bacteria is grown. Here it can be a large scale method, the large scale culture of the bacteria and it can be purified by chromatography, lyse the bacterial cells and get the recombinant protein being purified. Where protein purification is another big topic where uh, purification methods are many which we can see in our next video. So advantages includes rapid doubling time and uh, genetic manipulations are easy whereas drawback is, is it is not able to process introns or it cannot do extensive post translational modification. Whereas this yeast is advantageous over bacterial system majorly because of its post translational modification and higher expression levels. And here we can use the host Saccharomyces pickia pastoris and also other Saccharomyces palm based species where here we can use the target higher insert, the insert can be of higher size and we can also get specific higher expression of the recombinant protein. In case of insect system, a baculovirus can be used, a baculovirus uh, can be used as a target and the eukaryotic post translational modification or a proper protein folding that is very essential in case of a phosphorylated form of protein or a glycosylated form of protein. The post translational modification is important and hence this method is much useful compared to yeast or bacteria. So here the capacities you get more PTM or human protein like content and the structural assembly is also very accurate. So two modes of expression is possible both transient and stable whereas uh, in transient it's a uh, it is used in basic uh, basic uh, research whereas stable expression is essential in order to get into a therapy uh, to get a protein recombinant protein that can be used in a disease therapy and mammalian expression system. The, compared to other methods, it is more costlier whereas though it is costlier, it is more accurate and you, and you get a human like form of protein. Where you have two methods, one is plasma transfection and another is viral transfection that is transduction whereas here it is transfection. Here you, you, you use a liposome uh, uh, compound that a carrier vehicle that can be used to deliver the target gene insert in, so into the eukaryotic cell whereas in case of virus. A virus is being manipulated, the target virus will contain the gene of interest and the gene of interest is inserted into the target cell using a transduction process. I have told you about how all a protein can be expressed or what are the protein systems, uh, expression systems that are being present. In the next video we can see about how these uh, expression, how these recombinant proteins can play a major role in the field of agriculture, in the field of medical as well as white industrial biotechnology. Thank you.